So here we have a dead generator. The head of it is dead and it's a very common question. How you get this off and what else can you use these engine for? Can you use them on a go-kart? Can you use them on other applications? So I'm gonna answer that. I'm um, in the back, we just usually have a bearing housing and this just sandwiches between and everything is just held together with these long tie bolts. Generally, they're always on the outside. Sometimes they may be on the inside. But you take that off, take this off, and now you're left with your rotor in here. And how you get that off is the ultimate question. It is on a tapered shaft. It's what they call, I believe, a, a J609B, A or B, something to that effect, um, shaft on the engine. And then this is pressed on it. And it's on a taper, so this always stays perfectly centered and it doesn't take much force to actually clamp it on and it stays on there and it doesn't have any wobble where if that was just a keyed shaft there would always be a little bit of slop at the end of this but the taper shaft makes it firm and so on the very end right here i actually removed just this long bolt that doesn't actually retain that much pressure but is enough to to pinch it on that taper and now it's fixed on there so the way you get it off is i'll show you you have your main crankshaft and this is the part that sticks outside the engine there's your your piston and then, so this is the crankshaft on the engine. You have a threaded hole and you'll have actually, this is your rotor and it has a sleeve all the way through it. And it's actually essentially hollow through the whole thing. And you actually have this bolt that runs down th through the entire thing and threads into there and just pinches it on this, this taper. So the way you get this off is you have to pull this off of there so the easiest way is to get a shorter bolt and some of them actually come threaded down here on the end of the rotor. This one actually has threads down there, but some don't. This particular one that I'm working on today does not. So some of them have threads down there. So what you do is you just get a, a shorter bolt that only goes in say that long and then you just take a bar and jam a bar right in here this length. And as you turn that bolt in, it's actually pushing, pulling, the rotor this way and pushing the shaft that way. So we'll do that. Threads are already in there. Just find a bolt that fits and you're good to go. This one actually did not come with threads. So put threads. I got a bolt that just barely doesn't fit in there. And we'll just tap that in there. And what I want to do is I want the bolt to have about, not much, only about a, I need maybe a half to quarter inch of travel. And we need a rod that fits in there that length. So I take my original bolt and I stick it in and I find out exactly how long until it reaches those threads. So now I know the depth of that hole and it goes to right there. So now I take a rod that's bigger, that still fits in the hole and I want to cut it to the right length. And so I said I want about, uh, at least a quarter inch of travel with this bolt. So I want this bolt to half an inch or so. So if I get the bolt in about that far, if I cut it, if I cut it right about here, this will be the right length. I'm gonna take this rod and I'm just gonna jam it all the way in there. I'm gonna take my bolt, I'm gonna start threading it in. There we go. So there you go, you can actually see the tapered shaft now. But you'll find out that you're gonna butt your head against the wall endlessly trying to make this shaft accept any sort of pulley, go-kart, configuration or anything. Um, the best way to go about that is to disassemble the whole engine and the crankshaft, take this to a machine shop and actually have them turn this down to a three quarter inch shaft with the keyway, and then you can attach any of your stuff. But a lot of people are doing this on an extreme budget. They picked up this engine for free. They picked it up for 25, 50 bucks. And so they got a high horsepower engine. This one's like an 11 horsepower. they are gonna pay quite a bit of money for an 11 horsepower just to find out that it's worthless because of this shaft. So a couple other options are to buy a an adapter. And a lot of people will look for that. And there is a company out there that's selling adapters on eBay. But the problem is, is because this is so big and it has to go across this whole thing is it actually ends up leaving you with an inch and an eighth shaft which is way too big to accept standard go-kart or other accessories so you end up butting your head against the wall too and that's going to run you just shy of a hundred bucks 
and you don't want to invest that into there. So this particular shaft, and they're all about the same, is uh, goes from about an inch and a quarter down to about five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch starts about right here. And that'd be about a standard shaft. So if you wanted to, if you didn't want to take this actually to a uh, machine shop, you could probably get away with it, take you a fair amount of work, but put this on your workbench, be very crude, but actually sit there with an angle grinder and cause this is spinning. So you'd get a pretty decent edge and just run the angle grinder down it and go back and forth. You ended up with a three quarter inch shaft and then grind your own, uh, try to grind your own keyway. It would probably end up very, very, very rough, but that is an option if you didn't want to take this into a uh, machine shop. And I, I don't know how much it would actually cost to have a machine this. Um, I'm assuming probably uh, 75 bucks, something to that effect if you found, or maybe 50 bucks if you found a really good deal. Um, the other option is to put a new crankshaft in, but you know, right there you're gonna find yourself out a pretty penny, probably over 100 bucks. Um, a third option is to actually take the shaft out of your old rotor. Because this is actually gonna be this one actually measures in here roughly, um, looks like not quite an inch and a quarter. So it's even an oddball size itself, but it has the correct taper in there and you could probably shim it up and get it up to about an inch and an eighth, but this has the right, um, the right taper and everything in it. And it'll be a straight shaft probably all the way through there. So just chop this off, grind it off, grind everything off that little, uh, sleeve in there. And then you'll have something that actually fits over there and it gives you straight walls and then you could probably um, affix a pulley or something to that effect to this. Again, very crude, um, but with enough time and patience, it probably could be done. Or you could actually weld that on there and you know, if you had your own machine shop, machine that down if you wanted a bigger than a three quarter inch shaft. But this is what you're left with. Just if you're looking to buy, get a generator and turn it into a go-kart, you're gonna run into a lot of issues unless you wanna spend a little bit more money, unless you wanna dump another hundred bucks into it. You're not gonna be able to use this engine for anything, unless it's another generator that has these weird tapered shafts. It's better actually to look for a, an engine virtually on anything else um, besides a generator, but sometimes these are the cheapest and sometimes the least used engines out there. So. That's what you can expect. Not the best news, not the worst news, but that's what you should expect. If you get one of these, you're going to dump at least another hundred bucks into making them work for another application, unless you want to put another generator, hook another generator to it. So thanks for watching. Slam that like button, comment below. Thanks guys. See you soon. Bye.